Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Today, let's talk about acoustic treatment. Do you need it? If so, how much do you need? Where, where do you put it? How much will it really help? How much money should you spend on acoustic treatment? These are all really, really good questions. And as much as I emphasize the low cost, low budget, use what you have, get started mentality, and as much as that's all that's truly needed to get great recordings and mixes, we always want to improve. And there's always other things we can do. One of those other things is to look into strategically placing acoustic treatment around your home studio for better recordings and better mixes. And so as I get this question a ton, and I don't cover it a ton on this channel, I thought I'd bring in one of my good friends, Rob Mazies from Musician on a Mission to talk to you about acoustic treatment. Now Rob is a super cool dude, super smart audio engineer and educator, and he's covered this perfectly in this video for you today. So I wanted Rob to speak to you directly about the topic of acoustic treatment. Take it away, Rob. In this video, you're going to learn whether or not you really need acoustic treatment and then how to acoustically treat your room to make music making easier. Hi, I'm Rob Mazes from musicianonamission.com. And before we talk about how to acoustically treat your room, and I'm also gonna talk about room choice and speaker placement. Well, first we need to address that question of do you actually need acoustic treatment in a modern home studio? You're not gonna like this, but honestly, it depends. There's no right or wrong way to do anything and there's no yes or no answer to that question. It is possible to make professional sounding music at home without any acoustic treatment at all. But, and this is a big old but, it will make it much, much easier. When it comes to mixing, you can hear the EQ changes you're making. When it comes to recording, you're gonna have a more controlled environment where you don't have as many room reflections or really obvious reverbs, flutter echoes, stuff like that. It makes the whole process easier if you add acoustic treatment to your home studio, which is why I really recommend that people do it. It's a cost and time effective way to improve the quality of your music. Sure, it's not as fun as buying new plugins, and it's pretty boring to be honest, but it really does have a big effect. Now to be absolutely clear, that doesn't mean you can't get good results without acoustic treatment. It's just gonna take a little more work, it's gonna be a little bit harder, you're gonna have to rely more on cardioid microphones to block out the room. And you could use guitar amp simulation or lots of virtual instruments so you're not even recording anything in the room. And then when it comes to mixing, maybe you just rely more on headphones to make sure the room isn't influencing your decisions. It's more than possible, it's just gonna be a little more difficult and a, a bit more time consuming to work around those issues of having an untreated room. So keep watching if you want to learn how to treat your room on a budget, but first of all, there are two things we need to address first, and these are often overlooked, and that's room choice and speaker placement. Because arguably, these two things, or at least speaker placement, is just as important as acoustic treatment. But let's start with room choice. I have four tips for picking the best room in your home to set up your studio. Tip number one is to avoid perfectly square rooms or close to square because in those kind of rooms you'll get really strong standing waves and they're just frequencies that really build up due to the dimensions of the room. So avoid square rooms. Tip number two is to consider speaker placement as you pick a room. Think about where you could place the speakers and we're gonna talk a lot more about this in a second but bear this in mind as you choose a room. So you choose a room that can actually support a good speaker placement. Tip number three is ideally pick a room with a wooden floor or laminate instead of a room with a carpet floor because generally they'll just sound a bit more open, a bit brighter, and when you then add treatment, it's gonna sound more controlled, whereas carpet will kill a lot of the high frequencies but not the low, so sometimes you get a bit of a duller sound. So for recording and mixing, it's better to have laminate or wooden flooring and then add treatment to control the reverberation and the standing waves and all the other issues in the room. And then tip number four, if you have a room that already has thick curtains in front of the windows, that's gonna help too because windows are actually quite useful. They let a lot of the low end through, so they're effectively a free bass trap in your room. That's the concept that we're gonna explore a bit more in this video, but they don't absorb the high frequencies, they reflect them. So if you have a window with thick curtains, the curtains absorb the high frequencies and then the low frequencies just pass through the window. So it's quite a good way of adding some absorption to the room. So if you already have a room that has a window with thick curtains on it, or thick blinds or anything else, that's gonna help. Now, bearing all this in mind, I know most people won't have a choice. There will just be one room in your house. Maybe it's your bedroom, maybe it's a spare room, maybe you're just in the corner of the living room you probably don't have much choice or you just end up taking the space that your partner decides to give you. So bear those things in mind, but don't worry too much if you don't have the perfect room, as long as you then nail the speaker placement and the acoustic treatment, which we're gonna talk about next. 
Let's start with speaker setup and choosing the right position for your monitor speakers. Guideline number one is to avoid placing the listening position, i.e. where your chair is, where you're sitting, halfway across the room. Because if you're perfectly halfway in the room, which is actually quite common, it's quite easy to have a room, put a desk in, and then by the time you add in your chair, it ends up being about halfway, at least in small homes in the UK. I don't know about over in the States, but that's just something to bear in mind. You don't want to be perfectly halfway. In fact, the ideal place to have your listening position is about a third of the way across the room. Guideline number two is to create an equilateral triangle between your speakers and your head. So the distance between the two speakers should be exactly the same as the distance from each speaker to your listening position. Guideline number three is to point the speakers towards your ears. So ideally they would be at ear level anyway, so you don't need to angle them up or down, but if they are above ear level, angle them down towards you, and then just make sure you turn them so they're actually pointing inwards towards you. Guideline number four is that the distance between your monitors and the side walls shouldn't be the same as the distance between your monitors and the front wall. Otherwise you're gonna get really strong resonances. So let's say your right monitor speaker is 30 centimeters from the wall to the right of it, that's the side wall. Well, you wanna make sure it's not also 30 centimeters from the front wall, which is the wall behind the speaker, the front as you're looking down the room. Just check quickly, make sure those distances aren't the same. And then finally, guideline number five is to position your speakers so they're firing down the longest wall. Doing this will give you a flatter listening experience because it provides more room for the sound waves to travel before they reflect off that back wall behind you. But this one's tricky because that only works if you're gonna add acoustic treatment. If you're not gonna add any acoustic treatment, it's actually better to position the speakers so they're firing down the shortest wall because you'll get a really loud reflection from that side wall and that's one of the first places we're gonna add treatment. So that's it for speaker placement. Once you've got room choice speaker placement down, we can now focus on acoustic treatment, but only after doing those other two things first. Now, the first question people have when it comes to treatment is, what material should you use? Should you use foam, fiberglass, rock wool? Well, I prefer to use rock wool or fiberglass. If you look at the absorption graphs for foam, it's just not as absorptive in the lower mid range and the low end. And these are the areas where we have the biggest problems with standing waves in the room. Sure, a bit of foam in your studio is better than no treatment at all because it's still gonna kill that reverb a bit. But in terms of creating a flat listening environment, which is what we're going for, where there aren't any huge peaks or troughs in the frequency spectrum, foam's only gonna help the top end. And in fact, what ends up happening, if you have loads of foams, it starts to sound really muffled. Instead, we wanna use rock wool or fiberglass to absorb the low end and the lower mids, because this is where the standing waves are. This is where the biggest issues occur. So assuming you decide to go that route, there's a couple of options available to you. You can either buy panels from a company like GIK Acoustics, or you can make panels yourself. And this is really easy. You just need some wood and some rock wool. If you do this yourself, make sure you use all the right safety equipment, glasses, a mask. And in fact, if you can find mineral wool, it's not as bad for your health. But if you do use rock wool, just be really careful where you're handling it. If you do decide to build your own panels, there are plenty of resources available online. So I won't go into that. Instead, what I'm gonna focus on now is where to place those panels. Now you'll find loads of information out there about acoustic treatment, and it can get really, really overwhelming when you're trying to figure out where to place your panels but we can actually forget all of that and narrow it down to two key principles. First, you need bass traps to control the low end. Then you need absorption at the first reflection points to create a reflection-free zone around your listening location. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's start with bass traps. As I already explained, the biggest issues we have when it comes to room acoustics in a home studio are in the low end. And if you measure your room using a tool like RoomEQ Wizard, which I really recommend doing, you'll see these huge peaks and troughs in the low end, whereas the top end, it starts to just kind of get jumbled up and you can't really treat individual frequencies. But in that low end, you can really hear if 100 hertz is just missing completely. You're gonna boost that too much when you're mixing, you take the mix out of the room, and then suddenly when you listen to it in the car, that frequency is really overpowering. This is why it's hard to make mixes that translate because your room is essentially lying to you. So to solve that problem, we need bass traps. We need acoustic panels, fiberglass or rock wool, that are thick enough or have a big enough air gap to absorb those low frequencies. There are two ways to do this. First of all, you can put treatment in the corners of your room because that's where the bass builds up the most. So where any boundaries meet, whether it's two walls or two walls and the ceiling, so you have three boundaries meeting, that's where you'll get the biggest buildup. So in my room, I have these huge tri-traps from GIK. They're these big floor to ceiling blocks that push into the corner and you can make something similar yourself. If you are gonna go the DIY route, you don't necessarily have to create a triangular panel that's got 
treatment inside the whole thing. You can just use thick panels and place them diagonally into the corner and the air gap behind them in that corner will help with the absorption. So that's approach number one, treating the corners. Approach number two is to just use really thick panels everywhere else. In my first studio, I couldn't put in corner panels because my bed was in one corner and there were shelves in another corner. So instead, I just used really thick treatment, four inches of rock wall with a four inch gap, so eight inches in total, and place them on the first reflection points, which we'll talk more about in a second. And that has a similar effect. That's still gonna absorb some really low frequencies. So you either treat the corners with corner traps or you just use really thick panels with an air gap because that air gap extends the frequency response of your panel. And now for acoustic treatment principle two, and then we're finished, and that's first reflection points. Your goal is to try to create an environment between your speakers and your listening position where you aren't hearing reflections off the walls. First of all, those reflections will coincide with the signal that you're hearing directly from the speakers, and this causes something called comb filtering, which I'm not gonna go into here, but you can look into that more, and that will just basically screw up the whole frequency response of the room. And the other reason is that if you're adding reverb to your track, you wanna hear the reverb of the mix. You don't wanna hear the reverb of your room. So having a reflection-free zone where you don't have strong reflections from the side walls or the ceiling, that environment directly around you is going to really help with that. So the first place to put panels to create a reflection free zone is on the side walls and you just want to put them a bit further than halfway between you and the monitor speakers. Now the easiest way to figure out where to place these is to put a mirror or use your phone just locked like this because then it kind of reflects and just run that along the wall until you can see the speakers or just imagine where that point would be and that's when you want to add treatment. But my preferred approach is just cover a really large area so there's no risk of missing that reflection point. Now there are two more reflection points that people always miss. Side walls are important but the ceiling is just as important. In many rooms it's as close if not closer than the side walls so you need to have panels on the ceiling as well and in this case you can just position those panels exactly halfway between your listening position and the speakers. And then lastly your desk which is often the strongest of all especially if you have a solid wood desk, just a normal laminate desk, whatever it is, that's often gonna be the closest thing to the speakers, even if you have the speakers on stand. There are a couple of ways to address this. The first approach is to just use a really narrow desk and put the speakers on stands either side of it so that the first reflection point is actually on the floor and not the desk. So again, just imagine where it would be if it, the floor was a mirror. But that's often really hard to do and you're still gonna get a reflection off the floor. So if you do that, you could add treatment to the floor, but there's another approach which is to slant the desk. This is one of the reasons why mixing desks are slanted, because by slanting the desk, you angle the reflection downwards so it hits your chest or your gut instead of your ears. So you can do that with a mixing desk, with a keyboard on your desk that then is tilted, with a bit of wood, and this is what I did, that then is tilted upwards at that reflection point, or you can just tilt the whole desk by about 10 degrees, which isn't particularly comfortable, but it's a good last resort. Once you've done one of those things, again, you just want to use a mirror or your phone and move it around, place it on your desk and make sure there aren't any spots where you can see the speakers. So there you go. That's everything you need to know about room treatment. And there really was a lot there. So I put together a PDF that takes you through all of that and provides you with a checklist so you can actually go through, make sure you do all of this. And it's got loads of information to recap what you just learned here so you can actually apply this and improve your studio. So if you want to get that free PDF, just go to musicianonamission.com forward slash acoustics. That's all from me. I'm Rob Mazes from Musician on a Mission. Thanks again to Graham for having me here and I'll see you around. I hope you enjoyed that video. Rob's a great guy. He's also a home studio musician like you and me, so he knows what it takes to get great recordings in his home studio. Make sure you download his acoustic treatment cheat sheet. Check out his YouTube channel as well. Tons of great content there. All the links below. And if you want my personal recommendations for all the other gear you're going to need in your home studio, from microphones to audio interfaces to speakers, headphones, software, all that stuff, be sure to download my free studio gear guide. Updated every year. Links below, go to studiogearguide.com to get my personal gear recommendations for every single budget and every single category. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you on another video real soon.